Main answer, get brighter. Secondary answer, stays same brightness. So, so this is one that you'll have to, you'll have to think about and have in your, in your memory what the brightness of this thing is. Um, and the reason is once I pull it out, things may change slightly before it comes back to a steady state because each of these things is hot and it takes a while for them to change. And this thing also has its own uh, time scale, actually. This thing protects itself. So if I make a change, it doesn't let me make that change very quickly. It doesn't respond quickly to that change in order to not destroy itself. Um, so think about how bright this is. If you thought it got more bright, let me suggest that it be clear to you. <laughs> a tiny bit more bright shouldn't, uh, you know, 1% shouldn't be called more bright. Uh, if it's more bright, then you ought to make a guess as to how much more bright. If it's less bright, then you ought to clearly see that it's gone down. If you can't clearly see one or the other, then it's probably about the same. That would be my way of having you think about this. Okay, so I'll pull one of these out and think about the other one. What did it do? Now, now how many uh, stays the same brightness? Got brighter? Anyone see it get brighter? All right, it didn't get brighter, it stayed the same brightness. This is actually a reasonably important situation. Why did it stay the same brightness? Well, the brightness, the power, depends on the current and the voltage change across it. And the voltage change across it is I times R by because there's just a resistor in between there, so the voltage change is just due to a resistance between across that one uh, bulb. And so that's I squared R. Um, so, so what I'm basically saying that since R didn't change, what I'm basically trying to, what this shows you is that the current is the same. Why is the current the same? Well, what's the voltage drop? Let's say this is a one and a half volt battery. Then I could, I could say that if I call this zero volts, voltage, by the way, is like, is like potential energy. There isn't a zero until you choose what you decide zero should be. You can change the voltage, you can change the zero around a lot because all that matters is delta V. Doesn't matter what the absolute voltage is. In fact, there's no real absolute voltage other than what we happen to pick. So let me call the negative side zero, just because it doesn't matter. Let me call that zero voltage. That's zero voltage all the way along there because it's along a bare wire. That's zero voltage all the way along there because that's along a bare wire. What's on the other side? If it's a one and a half volt battery, that's one and a half volts. So across this bulb, you go from one and a half volts down to zero. Across this bulb, you go from one and a half volts down to zero. What happens when I pull that out? This is still one and a half volts all the way. This is still zero all the way. This thing has not changed because those, the voltage across it is the same as it was. In fact, the way these are wired, is called a parallel connection. That's where the voltage change across one circuit element absolutely must equal the voltage change across the other element. Why would they have to be equal? Well, because I took a wire from one side, from the left side of one of them, and I connected it to the left side of the other. So those two sides on the left have the same voltage. I took another wire and I connected the right side. So the right sides have the same voltage. So the voltage drop is the same. In fact, the battery is also in parallel with those two. 
it has just because there's a wire on the left hand side of this connected to the left hand side of the battery a wire on the right hand side of that connected to the right hand side of the battery the battery also have to, has to have the same voltage drop as those two light bulbs and when I take one out that doesn't change the fact that the one I left has the same voltage drop and so the same current in fact there's also a voltage drop across here. This is one and a half volts right here, and over here on the left hand side is zero volts. So there's a voltage drop across that, but there's nothing in between. So I'll, I would say the resistance is essentially infinite, and if there's an infinite resistance, then you're not going to get a current, even though you have a voltage drop, because electrons can't jump across that, basically because electrons can't jump across from one wire to another. Of course, I said a, a volt and a half battery. If I had a 250,000 volt battery, I, I don't think there is such a thing, but if I had a 250,000 volt battery and I put, and this was zero volts and this was 250,000 volts, you've seen lightning. You know that electrons have a way, a charge has a, finds a way sometimes to go right through the air. But, but that's with gigantic voltages. 100 volts like you have here in, the, in these outlets, not very big. Big enough to kill you, but, but not big enough to cause electrons to jump through the air. Fortunately, or each of those little things would have a, an arc of electrons coming through them all the time, which might be kind of fun, but uh, would, would start costing you money. Any questions about this, what, it, what a parallel connection means? It doesn't mean that these two objects, that these two sets of wires are parallel to each other. It doesn't mean that. It means that one side of this one is connected by a bare wire and the other side of this one is connected by a bare wire to this one. So that means they're connected to each other by wires. Yeah. Could you explain one time why the current stays the same? So because this is a one and a half volt wire, if it's a one and a half volt battery, then this voltage is constant all the way along that bare wire because there's no resistance along a wire, so the voltage is the same all the way along the wire. So the voltage here is a volt and a half. On the other side, the voltage is zero. And so the voltage drop is one and a half volts for this one. I call it zero. I, I, as I said, I get to name whatever voltage I want to, I can call that zero. I could have called the right hand side zero. I could have called this one zero. Then I would have had to say this one is negative 1.5. It, it doesn't matter because delta V's are the only thing that matters, not the absolute voltage. I called that zero because I wanted to talk about it and I didn't want some number I had to keep subtracting to get 1.5. People can subtract zero really easily so I, it just makes it easier to talk about. Zero voltage, by the way, the, thing, the place we call zero voltage is also called an electrical ground. It's, it's just what you, when you say grounded, you mean something is connected to what you tend to call zero voltage. You don't have to call it zero. but but we have to call something, we get to call something zero, and so what we choose to call zero voltage is literally the ground, the earth. So this has a volt and a half across it in both pictures. If it has a volt and a half as delta V, and between here and here there's no battery, between this point and this point, all I did was cross a resistor, so delta V is minus IR, for both of those, same delta V, same R, same I. If it's the same delta V and the same I, it's the same power and the same brightness. 